My name is Peter Davison, I played the Fifth Doctor, and you're listening to the Five-ish Fangirls. The tangents of Squee continue all the way to episode 148 of the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. And once again, the dump trunk of news is backed up. Beep, beep, beep. And good lord, we're drowning. <laughs> In the best way possible. Uh, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Five and Sharing Girls podcast. So glad you could join us. Let's start off like we do every week. We're on the virtual table and see who's joined us this week. This is Brittany in Bethlehem. This is Chrissy in Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, oh, Hello everybody. Fandom Christmas Part 2. <laughs> yes, and us wishing that we had an actual TARDIS to do time travel. And- <clears throat> yeah. Right? I, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm so... It's like, one of these days I'd like to do San Diego Comic Con. Just once. Just to say I did it. But mm-hmm. I would still need to rely on other people's news outlets to be able to keep yeah. up on everything. <laughs> so. Right. Well, especially for Hall H, because basically yes. that's pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And unless you, like, climb up into the rap, you know, the rafters and, you know, hide from security for four days, you, you're not going to get to be in Hall H. So. <laughs> This is this is the point where I'm just kind of like you know what I'll just watch from everybody else's you know Facebook Twitter pretty feeds much. and stuff yeah. like that. But, mm-hmm. well, you know it's all going to end up online anyway eventually. So eventually, mm-hmm. yay. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get to that. We got to get to the non San Diego Comic Con news first. <laughs> uh, uh, I want to have a real quick warning on my end. There's a storm going on, so oh, if yes. you hear thunder. Sorry about that. It's ambient noise. Yeah. Or, or can't, can't control the weather. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Storm is uh, on vacation elsewhere, so we're, uh, yeah. we're, yeah. we're at the mercy Although of Mother Nature. Brittany, I will say this. It sounds really nice because it's, like, super hot where, you know, it's all yeah, like right now. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I hear the thunder and, and, and going on, and I'm like, oh, it's probably cloudy, probably going to rain. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, well, let's get into the non-San Diego Comic-Con news first, and let's start with the 10 o'clock news, unfortunately. Uh, Again. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, first up is uh, John Hurd. Um, you may not know his name, but you know his face if you watched Home Alone. He was the McAllister's dad. Uh patriarch of the McAllisters and uh yeah he uh, unfortunately passed away um no cause of death but I mean that doesn't really matter but it's it's it's, un- it's unfortunate I, I read a I think the article actually that I got linked um it talks about him and then some quote from uh because he's in Sharknado <laughs> <laughs> before Sharknado, the first Sharknado came out, and he said something along the lines of, "This will hopefully this will uh, this will uh, help uh, resurge my uh, acting career and not just be the dad from Home Alone or something like that." So, fu- it's funny that you know Home Alone, classic '90s movie, and he was hoping that <laughs> Sharknado would, you know, re-kickstart his acting career. <laughs> The movie Sharknado. Well, oh goodness. Well, and like because this happened on Sunday, and um, I have Sundays off typically. And but you know, um, my bosses and some of my coworkers are they were still working on the site, and they were all bemoaning because I guess he's been in other movies. And I'm like, um, I don't know what else he's been in other than Home Alone, mm-hmm. but it's still it's sad. Yeah, it's gonna be sad this Christmas time when I watch it. Yeah. Home Alone. Yeah. yeah. That's a that's an annual tradition. We always we always watch Home Alone and Home Alone too. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yep. Yes. And then the yep. other bit of ten o'clock news. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And this one, this one was a gut punch because I actually met her in person at Gallifrey one yeah. several years ago. Uh, it was um, Deborah Watling, or you know, best known possibly for playing uh, Victoria Waterfield in Doctor Who as a companion to the Second Doctor. She uh, she passed away, age sixty nine, from a they said a, a brief bout with cancer, mm-hmm. and uh, so I was just like. I, 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 the 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 link here, talking about it, said that you know she was supposed to go to a convention in New Zealand, but had to cancel because because of illness and and that you know that basically was it. And I'm just sitting here going like, oh, really? I mean, because I I don't know. I, I like I said, I met her at Gallifrey one when I went, and she was just so sweet and so just. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think how to describe her. It's kind of like because because you know Victoria was a companion along with Jamie, so she and Fraser Hines were good friends. And mm-hmm. if you've ever seen Fraser Hines at a convention, he just he kind of likes to just make make comments that are just like kind of inappropriate but <laughs> funny. And he would do he, and when, on all the panels that he was on with with Deborah, Deborah would just she would she would you know, like blush and, and it just say, say certain things. And then there was one panel that I actually record. I, I just remembered I videoed a part of it for about five minutes and I should actually put a link to it on the Facebook page um, of Frazier and Deborah talking about different things. And, and Deborah was talking about how Frazier would pull pranks on, well, well, Frazier and Patrick pranks on her no. and there was like one when they were filming i want to say web of fear um and they're supposed to find some you know some some clue as to where, where the yeti are coming from and somebody somebody had one of them had, had found a pair of uh deborah's knickers <laughs> and they were Aww. they were using that as the prop in in the scene to for rehearsal and she was like she wasn't on she wasn't in the scene her character wasn't in the scene, but they were like going back and forth talking about her knickers. <laughs> and she was, just, she was laughing about it. I mean, at the time, you know, she was saying she was so mortified, but she was just like, she was laughing about it just as much as anybody else. And Man. it's like, it's like, yeah, she had that, she, you know, she had that very prim proper tone, but then underneath it's like, she was just having fun with it. And I'm like, Oh, you're so adorable and you're wonderful. And mm-hmm. I just, Ah, uh, yeah. I'm just I'm gutted. Yeah. Really. The, the, the thing with her passing specifically is, you know, usually, you know, we as we've had, the, you know, these actors and musicians or whatever, you know, pass on, and we always say, you know, yeah, they're no longer with us, but their body of work lives. In Deborah's case, it's not because there's so much of right. hers that's missing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, which was heaven they found web of fear and enemy of the world yeah yeah and she did do some some stuff with big finish yes so i was like i was digging through my big finish collection like how oh, i know i got victoria stories in here somewhere and even yeah. if i didn't i'd be like i'm gonna go to big finish and buy a few because i want to listen mm-hmm. to them because mm-hmm. she's just like yeah i mean like you said holly thank goodness they found the you know enemy and web back Back in the Hopefully they'll not continue not to find or reconstruct more. So they are worth your time. Yeah. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a little more partial to Enemy of the World. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's such a it's just, um, it's such a fun story to have Patrick playing two parts. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then and then Jamie and Black Leather doesn't hurt matters yeah. any either. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Well, Enemy enemy was, you know, and and people said this at the time, like, you know, Enemy of the World was the one that everyone was like, oh, yeah, that one's kind of kind of dumb or whatever. Then they see the whole thing of like, oh, wow, that one was actually really good (laughs) because they'd only ever seen the one one episode is like episode three that was in the middle that that didn't really have any kind of context of how does this (laughs) work? Yeah. Yeah. So it just just looked really good and you couldn't get the full story even from the recons and stuff like that yeah so it's like i mean that one is 
that one moved up as one of my favorites yeah. after, after I saw the whole thing. Yeah. But, yeah. <sighs> and, and, and Victoria has some really good moments. In, in yes, she does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, I just... Yeah. I'll, uh, I'm just I'll, sad. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll post on our... Uh, on our Facebook page, um, that, uh, there's a, uh, YouTube channel. If you're a fan of Doctor Who fan made stuff, Babble Color. Uh, oh, yes. He, he put together a tribute to, to, oh, nice. I'll post, I'll post that on our Facebook page so people can watch it and feel the feels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh yeah it, it's unfortunate is is what it is so but we uh we'll remember we'll remember victoria fondly so. mm-hmm. oh yes so, so. all right well let's move on to slightly less depressing news i guess <laughs> so let's move on to some convention announcements mm-hmm. so salt lake Another comic-con big one for salt oh lake City. boy i am jealous i am okay, so okay. jealous I, I of this set, i have to set this one up yeah if, if, if i may on the um so so salt lake comic-con there's the public there's the public facebook page where they can you know have all the announcements and news and, stuff. and then there's the closed group closed put in air quotes because basically anyone can join it if they get added to it but anyway um and people and it's just sort of like a big kind of free for all people talk about you know the guests they'd like to see they ask questions about you know you know procedure or policy or rules or they just you know they post funny memes and different things it's kind of if anyone else has ever been on a a cons back end fun Although some of the some of the trends get a little annoying, but I won't go into that. But anyway, well, one of the things there there are several people that have been actively campaigning for at least a year for certain guests. Mm-hmm. One of them was like one person is like begging for a mer- for for the and else has been trying to get Christian Kane. Dick Van Dyke was one of the was one of these, and you know every day someone would post a picture of Dick Van Dyke from. You know, any one of his many appearances in, in pop culture media, and, and it's hashtag life without dick, <laughs> is, is what this, and I can't remember who the person is, and I just, it just, it, it, it amused me. So when they were, like, teasing that this announcement was, like, huge and awesome, and everyone's guessing people like, you know, David Tennant, or Gal Gadot, or you know, Tom Hiddleston, Benedict Cumberbatch, you know, the big name, the really big names that people have been asking for forever, Nobody guessed it, Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> it was going to be the big announcement, and there he was. And oh. everybody, everyone was just like, and now I can't remember the, the lady's name who's been actively campaigning for him. And I forget, and I apologize for that. Everyone was just like tagging her in the announcement, like, look, 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 you did it. And she was just like, hey, and just going nuts. And uh, one of the uh, the organizers or the founders of Comic Con, I think it's Dan Farr, uh, did. Um, some kind of movie or, 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 or small fan short, some digital thing. I can't remember what it was exactly that Dick Van Dyke was, was involved in and he's been trying to get him forever. And so finally, lo and behold, Disney legend, he's been, he's been named a Disney legend, right? Yes, am I believe I, so. Am I pulling that out of nowhere? No, I believe, I okay, believe, yes. I believe he's got legend status. Okay. I thought so, but I should have checked. But anyway, but yeah, Dick Van Dyke's coming to Salt Lake Comic Con, and it's kind. Of... I, I I hope I hope that uh, I, I hope that the uh, person who is doing the campaign, you know, gets some sort, of, sort of like you know first crack at a the photo <laughs> op or <Me> something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like. First in line to, to buy the photo op. Actually, I don't know if the photo ops have gone on sale yet. Yeah. Uh, yet, but um, hopefully they yeah. get first crack. Like, please, <laughs> yes. I'm like, I'm like she deserves it. Holy uh-huh. cow! Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Yeah. That's funny though. Now who now who's she gonna campaign for? <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> she gotta pick someone new. <laughs> people campaign for their favorites. So that's a, like I said, there's someone else that's campaigning to get Christian Kane here and I'm just like, Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I uh-huh. approve of this one. Yes. Yes. Not that I didn't approve of the other ones, but I'm like yeah. I'm more invested. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome though. Dick Van Dyke. That's awesome. <laughs> I know. Uh, I, oh, wow. Well, wait. Yeah, I guess he has started, kind of started doing conventions recently. Yes. So it was like. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, I love it. No. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, and in uh, other convention news, Gen Con. Saturday badges are now sold out. <laughs> Thursday badges are on track to sell out, and so are the family day ba- the badges, actually. So at the rate we're going, with slightly under a month to go, every form of badge will be completely sold out before Gen Con starts. So, Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is crazy. I mean, I'm not surprised, considering, you know, it's the 50th year. You know, it's a big, it's a big deal. It's a big milestone, but I'm actually surprised that there are still badges of any kind available with less than a month to go. Oh, but at the rate we're going within the net, probably by the end of the month at the current rate of the way they've been saying, Gen Con will be completely sold out and there will be no way to go unless they're still taking volunteers at this late in the game. So... I guess if you want to see if you can volunteer and work the con, and that'll get you in the door, you know, that would be your option at this point. <laughs> so, uh, I don't, I don't want to think about the number of people. Honestly, <laughs> I'm like, I'm excited. Like, I'm starting to get, we're starting to get, you know, PR, you know, announcements from gaming companies saying we're bringing this new game to kind of, you know, come to our booth and demo it. And there's some that look really interesting and, um, you know, all sorts of emails for, for things as press. And I'm like, yay! At the same time, I'm like, I don't want to think about the sheer number of people that are going to be there. <laughs> uh, my, 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 introvertedness is like screaming in horror at the idea of the sheer number of people so and then your fangirl is like it's gonna be fine Don't yeah worry. like it's gonna be awesome and it's gonna be terrible but yeah <laughs> uh, it'll be okay i was gonna make sure i have my inhaler with me and maybe a paper bag and a dark corner somewhere and i'll be fine <laughs> Plenty of vitamin C. Yeah. Plenty of water and lots of lots of fluids and hand sanitizer, and I'll be fine. Uh (laughs) So yeah, Gen Con. If you want to go, good luck. (laughs) At this point, I'm sorry. And if you are going, um, good luck. (laughs) (laughs) Be prepared for battle. (laughs) <laughs> but have, have fun too <laughs> well yes too. I, I kind of I kind of feel like the, uh, the 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 poor the poor people waiting standing on the on the wall at the beginning of the battle of Helm's Deep <laughs> <laughs> like they they know the hordes are coming and it's like Ugh. I need to uh need to Need to so channel for my those volunteers. Out. Yeah, I need to staffers at Gen Con. We salute you. Yeah, really. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, there come the shoes. Yeah. That's... All right. Uh, okay, that's convention announcements. So a couple of Doctor Who related announcements that did not come out of San Diego Comic Con. Surprisingly enough, uh, these were actually announced before. Um, so, uh, in big finish, making my wallet cry once again, because, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, we can't just stick with the main line and the, you know, companion chronicles and fun things like that. We got to keep bringing in characters that have never done big finish before. So therefore, yay, new box sets and mini series that I need to purchase. 
Um, so, we are getting a series of audio adventures with Georgia Moffat as Jenny. <laughs> nice. Well, everyone's been clamoring her for, for her to come back and bring back the, the character, so. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wait, you know, way to go, big finish. Yes. For, for stepping up. Yep. So, and uh, in the UK only has 12 actors per companion, because she will be having a companion, because she is the doctor's daughter, so uh, her companion is, we don't know the companion's name yet. But her companion is going to be played by Sean Biggerstaff, better known as Oliver Wood from the Harry Potter films. <laughs> Interesting. Cool. Yep. Now, I will note, Sean Biggerstaff has been in, in Big Finish a couple of times before, not very many. And now I'm blanking on which ones he's been in. And I think they were Eighth Doctor stories. I will have to look that up. Yeah, but he has but he has done Big Finish yep. before. Yeah. So and I'm gonna the, the the circle of UK actors and actresses <laughs> that Venn diagram continues to overlap is you know Yeah, pretty you've much. Got, you've got Georgia Moffat, who's the daughter, literal daughter of the doctor, aka Peter Davison. She's married to David Tennant, who was in Harry Potter as Barty Crouch Jr. <laughs> And who also plays the doctor. <laughs> who also plays the doctor. And then you've got Sean, who played Oliver Wood. Although Oliver Wood had already graduated Hogwarts by the time David Tennant made his appearance. But anyway. This is true. Okay. So, so he has been in, let's see, several big finish plays, including, oh, he played, he was in the webcast Shada. He played Chris Parsons. He's in the Skull of Sobek, which is an eighth doctor Lucy Miller story. Uh -huh. Uh he was in one called Time Reef, Curse of Fenman, Masters of Earth. I mean, he's been in fairly at least six of them here. Mm -hmm. And that's a Bernice Summerfield. Then, oh, Masters of Earth. This is a fairly new one, I think. A couple of years old. Um, that one's the Sixth Doctor story. And Enemy Lines is a Gallifrey uh, audio. Mm-hmm. So he's so he's, he's he's crossed over into several of the uh, different lines. So yay, yay, big finish! Oh. And just as a shy, si side note, side note, I can't speak. Uh, speaking of big finish, um, I believe later this week the um series of classic doctors with new era monsters drops um i think so because i think big finish on facebook has them kind of posting like a countdown yes yeah um but i would like to you know point point those out in particular and i'm not sure which doctor it is I, I know the fifth? fifth doctor with the sicker X. Okay, it's the sicker X. Okay. If memory. Whichever serves. doctor, whichever doctor. Oh, not sicker X, the Rachnos. Yes, Rachnos. the Rachnos. Right. So that's that's the one that um, Russell McGee did some work on. So Russell, who I interviewed at uh, PopCon, he did the sound design for the Rachnos. <coughs> cool. So that one in particular, you know, if you, if you enjoyed the sounds in that one, you have Russell to thank. <laughs> So when those drop later in the week, there you go. I'd, I'd recommend listening to that one first. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I was getting my Christmas enemy monsters confused because yeah. past weekend BBC America did a Christmas in July yeah, with all the go. Doctor Who Christmas specials. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Who everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and speaking of Doctor Who, last bit of news. Um, there is another Doctor Who related humble bundle available. Um, you've got yep. uh, eight days and some odd hours left, and mm -hmm. uh, depending on what you pay, you will get um, so many um, versions of the Doctor Who RPG. And it's uh, yeah, I've, I actually did buy it, and I've been starting to look through it um, just because. I mean, because, you know, Jared and I are part of of a 
RPG group. Mostly we do D and D. We're actually back to D and D after taking a break for a few months. But um, uh, I was just try- I just bought it because I was like, I want to you know see if it's something I can figure out because I am by no means the RPG expert of, mm-hmm. of our group. Um, but I'm kind of getting it. And so far, what I've been able to see is uh, I'm not sure. Jared could probably, if he looked at it, he could probably describe it better than I could. But it's basically the way it's run is if I don't know if you, if anyone out there is familiar with Abney Park's Airship Pirates, it's kind of a lot like that one where you you might not have like all the different polyhedral dice. You just use you know regular six sided dice. Mm-hmm. But it's you know it, it's very. I've I've just looked at the main book and I haven't like really looked at the. the source books too much yet but i mean it looked I, I, you know it might be if i look more into it over time i, I mean i just bought it a couple days ago um i might be able to run it possibly <laughs> our group is pretty pretty good about hey let's try out something new and yeah kind of fumble I've, our way through I've, it i've played um, the rpg and it's for and i'd never played an rpg before so yeah, and I've so it's, it it's pretty much, you know, you can play follow. a Time Lord, or you can play, yeah. uh, you could play a companion, or you could play, you could do like one, you could do a campaign where you're all unit yep. um, personnel. That's what I did, I was, like that, so. I was a unit, unit person. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at the unit stuff, and I'm like, this actually might be kind of fun. So, yeah. anyway, it you know, and, it, and it's Humble Bundle, if you pay 15 bucks, you can get... Uh, up, you know, it's basically three hundred dollars worth of of, of role playing books, which is yeah. a really great deal. Yeah. And then there's um, there's a, a, a Doctor Who Legacy pack in, um, included as well. So there's that, and it supports charity as all the humble bundle deals do. So mm-hmm. I, I think this one, the, the one they're doing, is for children in need. So that's one that's that's near and dear to many Doctor Who fans' hearts. So. Yep. Go take a look at it. Like we said, got about a little over a week left, and see if that's something you wanna you wanna get. And they're all and, and they're all um, digital versions of the books. You don't get the physical copies, but the PDFs work too. So. Yeah, it's a lot easier to carry around. <laughs> oh yeah, they're all on my iPad. Yeah, which I have in my hand. Right now. The the, 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 uh, the actual physical books are they're a decent sized books. So you know if you if you have oh the, yeah. The, almost the entire set, which is what this is. This is almost the entire set up to like whatever the most newest recent mm-hmm. ones where they include the twelfth doctor. Um Yeah. Yeah, they're they're decent sized books, so if you were trying to lug those around it it would get heavy <laughs> really quickly. So <laughs> and, and trust me, as someone who has lugged around RPG books before, it's nice to have them in pizza form, even if you know, referring yeah. to them to them as a little cumbersome. It's like it's it's the trade off. Like, would you rather have you know be able to flip through it, or be able to just take your iPad or tablet or what you know whatever you have? So it you know there's there's pros and cons to both. Yeah. Yeah. And some of those source books can be pretty hefty. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because I I I I'd actually seen seen some of these at our uh, the our game our local game store we go to, and I'm like. I should try to get some of these. And I look at it, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> so I was really excited to get this RPG Humble Bundle. So I'm like, yay, I have them all, and I didn't break the bank. Yeah. And since we've been downsizing our, our books, like Jared's been collecting our RPG books from, you know, from D&D to anything else for years. And, like, the whole – we have we have four bookcases um, along a wall in our bedroom, and the whole bottom shelves – are all D and D books and RPGs, and that that those take up a lot of space really quick. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, if you're even remotely interested in doing Doctor Who role playing games, this is a good chance for you to get some material. Yep. All right, that's it for uh, non fandom Christmas news. <laughs> <laughs> One bit of housekeeping, you still have a few days to vote for August uh, book choice on our Traveling the Vortex Doctor Who book club. Mm-hmm. Oh. Alright. So let's... get those votes in, too. All right. Yep. Alright, let's, uh, let's gird our loins here and uh, 
<laughs> dive into the madness that is San Diego Comic Con. <laughs> Yet another big, beautiful dump truck load of stuff. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like I was saying at the beginning of the show, like, n- not, you know, being not there and having access to the internet and things like Twitter and Instagram where, you know, things can be posted instantaneously. Um, it is still really hard to keep up on the things that come out of Uh this particular convention. So I have to say, um, not that they'll probably ever hear this, but thank you to places like The Nerdist and io9 and Uh other websites like that for curating everything Uh and, you know, making pages on their websites like here especially io9 they're like here's all the the announcements from thursday here's all the announcements from saturday I'm like thank you so much you know, <laughs> the nerd the nerdist is they're they're a bit more um uh, casual i guess about it because they're they're more actually involved into it like chris hardwick who moderates a lot of the the hall h panels um, constantly posting selfies of like Peter Capaldi and like I hate you. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> I love you, but I hate I you. love you, but I hate you. I want your job. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, you know, if if we don't mention something, it's not because like knock or like be rude to someone's fandom, but. There's, there's there's so much, and, like, we could talk about it all, but there's a lot of it that we don't care about, necessarily. And that's not to knock any, you know, if you're totally a fan of X fandom, and that panel, you know, totally got you excited about the next movie or TV series, great. But, you know, we, we have the things that we like. And we have the things that we know our listeners like. So those are the things we're going to talk about. That and that, yeah, that, that keeps the show from being like six hours long. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I kind of broke up our notes into like three major categories. So we have like toys and like collectible books type things. Um, films and TV. So, um, we'll, we'll kind of, uh, go in that. And then of course each individual fandom, whatever. So, um, (coughs) oh, right. Excuse me. I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. I've had this cough. I think it's allergies. So pardon me. Uh, (laughs) Don't know what's going on here. Uh, so we'll start with the toys slash collectibles slash books slash my Christmas list is growing. You have no idea. Um, <laughs> so um, there was a an entire like announcement panel um, about uh, is the, it was Saban's Power Rangers Toys and Collectibles Power Hour panel, which as a (laughs) power, yes, please. Um, so, (laughs) um, so they made, uh, toy and collectible announcements, um, including, uh, from Bandai, um, the Xeonizer from Power Rangers Zeo. So that was their equivalent of the Morpher once they moved on to the, the, the Power Rangers Zio, um, a collection of uh, legacy figures that will come out in spring 2018, um, a legacy um, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, so that's OG Rangers, uh, Sabertooth Tiger, and T Rex Zords, and the Golden Power Staff. No, this legacy is what I'm thinking of. They have done some Star Wars figurines, mm-hmm. and they are absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, my wallet's I mean, we're talking really <laughs> nicely done, articulated. Yeah, so. yeah. They, there's already some legacy stuff out there. I went to Toys R Us last week looking for something completely unrelated to Power Rangers, 
But as I was walking up and down the aisles and I found the section with the Power Rangers toys and they have the legacy uh, Ninja Megazord. And this thing's like four foot tall, three foot tall. It's like players and I'm like, oh, it's so shiny. Mm. I want it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so pretty. <laughs> and of course, you know, it's like a $200 toy it's it's really meant to be a collectible i would so take it out of the box and play with it uh -huh. <laughs> like appreciation value what no i need to make the megazord morph <laughs> so yeah that's it's probably in the same same uh vein as as the 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 saber shoe tiger and t-rex zords that they'll be releasing next year and i'm like oh I need it. I want it. I gotta have it. I don't need it, but I want it. <laughs> I need all the things. Uh, Shut up and take my money. Yeah. Oh my goodness. All, all the little goodies that oh, they the put things. out and are just like, all the, all the shinies. I want them. Yes. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. Um, um, and then from Enway, um, there's a Power Rangers Legacy game, and I'm, it's apparently like a mobile mobile game. I have no idea what the gameplay is like, um, but they have announced new characters that they're going to be adding to the game over the course of the next year, um, including uh, Black Dragon, who I don't really know anything about, um, Lord Dracon, which actually comes from the comics. Um, he is kind of the evil Tommy. <laughs> He's like the evil equivalent of a, uh, of a uh, Tommy Oliver from like an alternate timeline or something. Um, I haven't quite gotten to the comics yet. Um, the putties from the new movie. So, um, the 2017 movie putties and Ninja. So, which, you would have to watch the the Ninja Quest, the 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 essentially the TV storyline of how the Power Rangers got the ninja powers, as opposed to the nineteen ninety five movie, which is like not canon. <laughs> the TV show, it's like an alternate timeline. <laughs> it's the best way to consider it. So, but Ninja in the TV series, it sounded like Dudley Do Right. No, it was kind of <laughs> funny. He's supposed to be like this amazing like ninja legend, and he sounds like Dudley Do Right. It's kind of off putting. Like mm -hmm. you're a powerful ninja. <laughs> I've seen Dudley Do Right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it would be a little off putting. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the voice with the mannerisms, and it's kind of like yeah, this, this show is campy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. Um, and then from Imagine Next, uh, they are releasing a Megazord with Titanus. And this is actually more for like the little kids. It's not like a legacy super nice toy. So it's actually going to be in my price range. It's going to be like fourteen ninety nine. <laughs> like, I will buy that one. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> uh, plus Titanus does not get enough love. Um, and then from Pop Culture Shock, they are releasing a mini bust of Lord Draken. So, uh, yay, toys. Um, and then, um, Marvel, um, uh, or, uh, really announced a whole bunch of mostly figurines, like four and six inch figurines, um, of varying types. Um, there are like the, like the ones that you would expect to see in like Toys R Us where, you know, they come with the little plastic thing on top and they're attached to the cardboard. Um, all the way up to like the super, super nice, like sideshow collectible type figurines. Um, and then apparently Marvel decided that they needed to release a whole like truckload of Deadpool themed stuff and not necessarily figurines, although there are figurines for Deadpool, um, not just Deadpool, but characters related to Deadpool, but also Deadpool themed Nerf guns and Deadpool themed Monopoly. 
hmm. among other things. <laughs> I'm curious of what Pool 2 oh. is coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, it's like, I love all the different theme monopolies. Chauncey actually hates Monopoly. <laughs> so we have Doctor, we have a version of Doctor Who Monopoly that has never been played. <laughs> no, no one, no one will play Monopoly with me because I keep winning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see here. Yeah. I haven't played it yet, so yeah. I, need to I have no idea. I have no idea what what would be what would involve Deadpool Monopoly, and <laughs> part of me is a little hesitant to find out. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's like you, you want to know, but then you kind of don't. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, do I want to know, or am I going to regret this later? Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm I'm sure it can't be unseen. Yeah. (laughs) Something like that. Yeah. I mean, it it, is. But I am curious. Uh Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then, (laughs) in Oh My God, Everyone Wants This, whether they have children or not. Um, mm-hmm. Radio Flyer, the people who who <laughs> have made little red wagons for children for eons and eons and eons, um, have created a drivable Star Wars land speeder, just like what like Luke Skywalker drove in Episode Four. <laughs> oh boy, uh... I know, I know what Tiny's getting for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> It has uh, it has room for two pint size writers, unfortunately. A control panel with sound effects from the movie and a top speed of five miles per hour. <laughs> That's okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, it is available pre-order from Toys R Us for $499. Uh, it's expected oh to ship... Uh, September of this year, it runs on a 12 volt rechargeable battery and has a maximum weight of 130 pounds. AKA, I need to go on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe he won't be getting that for Christmas. That's a little pricey. Yeah. We'll talk about it. <laughs> we'll have to have a bit of a discussion. Yeah. Man, yeah, my God, they have this when I was a kid. I would definitely have gone this over a Bobby Jeep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Maybe maybe cool. grandma and grandpa will, will, will buy it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Tiny can grow into it. Yeah. This really. is true. Yeah. Like, we'll get it, it now and then he'll, station. He'll, he'll start learning how to as drive as he now. Isn't, as long as he doesn't whine about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. But yeah, this this was shared a lot on the social media. I pre I think I saw John Barrowman Wanted to buy one. <laughs> so, uh-huh. <laughs> so many people like, nephew, yes. I need this. I You're want this. Nephew. I gotta have it. I don't care if it's for children. I have to have one, and I totally get it. So, mm-hmm. It looks so cool. I mean, they they did the paint scheme. They even put in the little dents and dings that Luke could put into That's, it. I love that. <laughs> That's just amazing. Yeah, like, it is. <sighs> So cool looking. <laughs> uh, so you know, if you got five hundred dollars to drop on your kids or yourself, I guess if you if you want to push that hundred and thirty pound weight limit, um, more power to you. I guess. <laughs> Send or us pictures. Pet, or if you've pet. got a pet that doesn't mind getting there, you go. Yeah, cruising around. Hey, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, and then set tag us on Instagram or mm-hmm. Twitter and send us pictures of Fluffy riding around and playing <laughs> <laughs> Peter headed off to Hey, you know, people, people cosplay their pets, so why the heck not? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, oh, and last in the uh, things I can spend my money on, um, they're, they're going to release... A retrospective art book uh, all about the librarian's TV series. Ooh, this should be good. Yeah. 
I mean, just what they've done with the library itself. I can't wait to see, you know, the art designs and ideas that they had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is going to, um, it's, uh, it's going to um, cover the cinematography, the scenery, and the dazzling costume designs. And, yep. It'll give you a nice behind-the-scenes look at the artistry of the show. Yeah. It's supposed to be released in 2018 by... Uh, no, new series is going to be released in 2018. Uh, the book should be released... Uh, no, the book's going to be released in 2018. The comics are coming out later this year. That's what they're trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. what am I? Because the people that are doing the art book are also doing the comics. So, yes. Yeah. There's why I was getting confused. I'm like, it says Dynamite Entertainment. I'm like, 2018. Like, no. The book, 2018. The comics from the same company, September of this year. So, there we go. Ah. <sighs> That should be a nice addition to our uh, our collections. So I have the yep. big I have the big uh, Harry Potter page to screen book. So I, I'm guessing this is probably not going to be nearly as big because there's only three seasons of the Librarians, unlike the eight movies of Harry Potter. <laughs> but th those types of books are always fun. The you know the art of you know, video yeah. games or a movie or TV series or whatever. So, that should be fun. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, my Christmas list is so long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on to film. Um, I'm actually not sure if either of these, they're calling them movies TV, but considering they're calling them they're full length movies, regardless of where I guess you're going to consume it. I put these in the, the movie film category, so. Um, but Nickelodeon um, released uh, the first clip from the Hey Arnold, the Jungle movie. Um, and, oh my goodness, it feels. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice setup to explain how Arnold and all the kids are going to end up in the jungle, um, where... In theory, he's finally going to find out what happened to his parents. <laughs> We're going to find out what finally happens to his parents. Um, but it's this, this nice setup where the, all the kids in the, you know, from Arnold's school in the neighborhood um, put together this nice movie about how wonderful Arnold is. And they're using that as a, um, a way to enter a contest to earn the trip to go to the jungle. Um, and it's like this whole nice, you know, them talking about how, you know, you know, selfless Arnold is and how he does great things for everyone around him. And we get to catch up on some of the, uh, some of the characters like stoop kid, you know, he's no longer just on his stoop. He's on other stoops yelling at people. Um, <laughs> the pigeon man, which, it, you know, a lot of people thought that the pigeon guy had died and he, he didn't, he's alive. He just moved on. And with his pigeons elsewhere, so that's good. Um, so, but it's 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 a it's a nice way to ease back into you know the Hey Arnold universe. And I'm like, oh, Hey Arnold, and uh, apparently Helga was the one that arranged everything to get the get the get the submission done in time. And Arnold thanks her for it, and Helga goes oh, all nice of her. all uh, you know, Twitter painted. For Arnold, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a it's a cute it's a cute quip quip and uh, uh is a kind of brings you back into my childhood. Mm -hmm. Hey Arnold, mm -hmm. so, that hey, that's, you know, sorry. yeah exactly. <laughs> hey, move up my head. Um, and then the other from Nickelodeon, I didn't even know they were doing this. I knew about the Hey Arnold, and I knew they did the Legends of the Hidden Temple, like, movie thing. But apparently, 
I missed this or just got distracted by Legends of the Hidden Temple or something. Um, but they are also doing a movie for Rocco's Modern Life. <laughs> So, uh, it's Rocco's Modern Life Static Cling um, is the title, and they had, most of the original voice actors have, have come back, um, and um, essentially it is um, Rocco and Heifer and the gang in the 21st century, um, <laughs> and... Uh, um, and apparently the whole premise is Rocco is, um, I, I guess when the series ended, I really want to watch Rocco, but I guess when the series ended, they all went into outer space and now they're finally back on earth almost 20 years later or 21 years later. Um, and, uh, Rocco as is struggling to fit into modern day unlike heifer who is embracing social media and technology and food trucks um <laughs> so, kind of a fish out of water type thing i guess or um captain america after he gets defawed i don't know <laughs> It's it's kind of funny with all this nostalgic <laughs> stuff coming back it's yeah. like they're actually kind of poking fun at that a little bit saying like you know yeah you remember it from the 90s or whatever but it's but it's like how you know if, if it would have been made today it'd be way different yeah sort of a thing so yeah. it's like eh, you know yeah it's gonna be interesting with that that, that show creeped me out when i was little so i'm kind of curious of how i would feel watching it now yeah <laughs> show was so weird yeah mm -hmm. The, the, yeah, it kind of was. Yeah. <laughs> so weird. So, that's from Nickelodeon. And then uh, DC, because, you know, when you're talking San Diego Comic-Con, your two, and movies, your big your two big ones are going to be DC and Marvel. There, re there really wasn't a Star Wars presence at San Diego this year. Um, probably just because they probably felt they did enough at D23 Expo the week previously. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, in the world of the DCEU, I guess, uh, we got a new trailer or better trailer or something. Uh, it's a trailer for the Justice League. And um, I imagine that this trailer was probably cut after Wonder Woman. Uh, came out because she starts the trailer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure. Well, that's you know, not you know, in the, in the grand DC tradition of let's see, let's see what people actually respond to, and then we'll we'll reshoot everything. Pretty much, because <laughs> that's how we roll. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, hmm, Wonder Woman did well. Well, let's have her start the new trailer because then. People will be like, yay, Wonder Woman, she's awesome. And then they'll, you know, hopefully be sucked in enough to watch the rest of the trailer. <laughs> yes. Although, although every time I see Aquaman in these, I'm just kind of like, yeah, he's cool. Yeah, we do get to see way more of Aquaman in in this in this trailer. So that that's good, because I think in general, most people are most excited about Wonder Woman and Aquaman and Batman. Yeah. Batman's just like, oh yeah, Batman's really in it too. Really weird. So. <laughs> um, and there's Batman. Yeah, he's there too. Yay! Yeah. yeah, there's Batman and some other people too. And there's Alfred. Yay! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do get to see. So we do get to see the Amazons. So we do get to go back to the Themyscira, uh, at least for a little bit. Um, in the, Although, in the Justice oh, League, which is kind I don't of know. Fun. I don't know if it's just. I don't know if it's just me, but like the scenes of uh, Themyscira, um, they look a little darker than what they looked like in Wonder Woman so I'm just like ah. yeah. mm. but like 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 the, the colors aren't quite as vibrant and yeah. and, and pretty and well things. this so is just kinda... yeah this is uh, this is obviously after the events of Wonder Woman so they're well yes they've I'm been just... affected by the outside world unfortunately yeah. 
Yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of like, it, it, it was kind of the running joke of, you know, the DC movies. They're darker. They're, they're so dark you can't see anything. <laughs> and so I was like, yep, they're back to that. So we'll see. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not passing judgment until I actually see the movie. Like I said, yeah. Wonder Woman and Aquaman look pretty cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens. Yes. And Batman's in it too. <laughs> and the Flash. The show one's gonna be hard for me because I'm so used to Grant as the Flash. As the yeah. Flash. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, I'm I, having a I, really I, hard time. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm used having to, a really hard time yeah. reconciling this new kid to yeah. to to Barry Allen because I'm just like, you look just so whiny. Yeah. I think yeah, he was in be Fantastic Bees. He was kind yeah, of, I would say he was kind of the whiny kid in Fantastic oh, Beasts. Oh, is he the them, same so. kid? Yes. Yeah, it's the same kid. Yep. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, once I put All that right, two then, and that two together. To <laughs> yeah, after seeing Fantastic Beasts and then seeing, like, the first trailer for, uh, you know, the Justice League and Bruce Wayne goes to visit, you know, that version of Barry Allen, I'm like, you're the kid from Fantastic B. <laughs> what are you doing in the Flash? <laughs> You're, not right. exactly <laughs> You're not Grant. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. And then there's a little, like, thing at the end where, like, Alfred, like, someone shows up and Alfred's like, well, they told me you would show up. I just hope it's not too late. And people are like, is that Superman or someone else like the Green Lantern. And of course, we'll have to wait and see. We all know that Superman is coming back. Uh-huh. Uh, especially now that the, uh, it, it was to, earlier today, it is going somewhat viral on the interwebs that um, because they're having to do reshoots um, for the Justice League, of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the whole Wonder Woman thing. They're like, oh, crap, this is how you do a movie. Quick, reshoots! Um, Henry Cavill uh, is also in the middle of filming Mission Impossible, whatever number they're on, um, and has a mustache for that movie, and they won't let him shave it off, so they're going to have to CGI his mustache out. <laughs> for the Justice League of the Re- well, <laughs> spoilers, I guess. <laughs> so, when you go watch the Justice League later this year, and you see Henry Cavill on the screen, you know, you, you, you know, I guess if you have, if you're not that entertained by the movie, you can be like, hmm, was this pre-mustache or post-mustache? <laughs> was that CGI'd out? <laughs> Am I seeing a little bit of a five o'clock shadow? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> That's like the thing everyone's talking about right now is they're having to CGI out Superman's mustache. <laughs> oh, of all the things we could be talking about. <laughs> we should ha- keep it on and he'd be like the mirror. Superman. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, that's true. Yeah. Instead of a goatee, he'd have a mustache. <laughs> yep. Sure. Yeah. We'll go with that. <laughs> uh, so, uh, staying in the DCEU, uh, I'll, I'll flip these around because we just brought, you know, talking about the Flash. Um, they uh, have confirmed that the Flash, the DCEU Flash, will be getting his own movie. Um, But the storyline for his movie will be Flashpoint, which if you've watched CW Flash, then you should be really familiar with the Flashpoint storyline where Barry goes back in time and saves his mother and creates a whole big butterfly effect, which is awful. (laughs) What I don't get is why would they use that as the first movie for him? I don't know. Like, that that makes any sense. Uh-huh. To me, but I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> may, well, see this. This is the thing, and this is just me being speculative on things. I have no idea what's going on. <clears throat> um, it is the the movies, the DC movies, and the DC TV shows haven't really gotten along. It's like the movies are saying, "Oh, you know, we want to take precedent, and we don't care that you've been, you know, wildly successful and whatever." and actually built an audience 
And yet they're kind of cribbing off some of the popularity of, of the TV to the point of, hey, do you remember that, that, that season of Flash that you guys just did? Yeah, we're going to do the same thing in the movie. And it's like, uh, guys... Yes, that was the last season. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was. Oh. Although, I don't know. It's just... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know what to say about it other than it's just... You guys just don't need... You guys, you guys are on the same team. Why can't you just get along? Yeah. Right? Yes, I mean, you don't, have to, you, don't have to, you don't have to tie everything in, but... At least act like you're part of the same family or something. Jeez. Uh -huh. Like, if they're going to have, like, what they could have done with the flashes, because there's multiple flashes, they could have named, been, like, a different flash. That made no sense. Sorry. No, it could have been, like, you know, Jay Garrick or whatever. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm not in charge. Thank goodness for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what As, DC decides to use. Do uh, I think the one thing that I'm complaining about with the full flashpoint is this is the first time we're going to have our own Flash movie, so why would we even know what's going on with the alternate world? Like, yeah. That is true. It's like you know, we. Uh, it's like you haven't established the the main world. Exactly. That, so that's what, what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah. So how would we know what's different and what's not? I don't know. Yeah. Silly DC. Yeah. You try so hard. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, continuing in that train of thought. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, <laughs> along with uh, the the Flash movie and the Justice League, and um, eventually, I'm assuming Aquaman will also get his own uh, solo movie. Um, but at the moment, um, DC has announced that the next film, um, beyond the ones that we already know about in the DC EU, is going to be Shazam. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I'm just getting instantly flashing to the Shazam movie that starred Shaquille O'Neal. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's not what I thought. Quite, I was like, didn't we already do that? But wait, that was something Not different. quite the same. <laughs> so, in this case, um, Shazam, follow, this story, for those that don't know, um, follows young orphan Billy Batson, who is not Batman's son, by the way, <laughs> who gains the power of living lightning and becomes the hero Shazam. So, which way yeah. back, yeah, way back in the day, the character was also was actually called Captain Marvel, but uh, as you could probably guess, um, DC did not get to go very far with that particular name. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's back in what the seventies, yeah. I remember. Right. Oh, I don't remember, right, but probably. So you're reading that somewhere. Yeah. So essentially, it's gonna be the story of a kid with the body of a near god. So we'll see what that comes out of that. So um, who knows? <laughs> So, uh, there was speculation on whether Dwayne The Rock Johnson would be making an appearance um, playing uh, Black Adam, uh, the villain, um, but uh, apparently that is not the case. Black Adam is getting his own spinoff film, which is also in development, but uh, at this point, um, The Rock will not be appearing in Shazam as Black Adam. Although that's always subject to change. <laughs> yep. So yeah, DCEU. It's um, it's a thing. Something. It's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let's move on to uh, a cinematic universe that's less of a uh, train wreck. Uh, cinematic universe. <laughs> We're not biased at all. Not are we? at all. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> um, so um, we still don't have Infinity War footage, but they keep telling us soon. That's what they. Yes. That's what the Russos keep telling us soon. <laughs> But hey, we got we got a new Thor Ragnarok trailer, which yep, looks we'll get to that in a second. Awesome, we'll get to that in oh, a second. Okay. So we did get a poster, the San Diego Comic Con exclusive poster for Infinity War, which is actually broken up into three parts, and then when you put it together, um, it is this big epic Thanos is in the middle, and then you've got like you know Tony Stark and the people that you know he's allies with on one side. You got some of the Guardians of the Galaxy. And then you've got Captain America on the other side. Cap has a beard. And Black huh. Widow has gone platinum blonde. Huh. That's interesting looking, I have yes. to say. <laughs> so, uh, I, guess, I guess if you look at the poster, get that image in your head. So when the trailer drops, if we see them in that state, I guess it'll be less jarring. To be like, holy crap, Black Widow's a blonde now, which she's probably because she's, you know, deep undercover trying to stay out of mm-hmm. trouble after everything that went down in Civil War. Um, yeah. And Cap as well. I mean, Cap, I, I love how everyone's like petitioning now for Chris Evans to play like Solid Snake in a Metal Gear Solid <laughs> movie because <laughs> of the beard. <laughs> Uh, for once, Chris Evans could grow that post Captain America beard and get to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Which seems it seems to be that's what he likes to 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 wear anyway. Yeah, but usually, like before they get ready to start filming, like he's posting on Instagram, like, "Well, there goes the uh, off filming beard," and this time he did not have to shave it off. So, nope, <laughs> nope. What I'm curious about with this poster, I don't know if it means anything, but what's with the Guardians of the Galaxy broken up? Don't know. Mm-hmm. We shall find out. Yeah. Well, considering I don't know what state everyone's going to be in as far as, like, talking to each other come Infinity War <laughs> next year, because we this just know where true. we saw everyone. At the end of their respective films that they've appeared in most recently. Um, and obviously Thanos is the big bad. But as they also revealed at San Diego Comic Con. Thanos will not be working alone. He, We knew that Gamora and Nebula were his children. He has mm-hmm. other children <laughs> as well. Um, that are still with him. And going to be fighting alongside of him. So it's not just going to be like you know. All these superheroes versus Thanos and the Infinity Gauntlet. Thanos is going to have help. And, oh yeah. And with the Infinity Gauntlet in his possession, uh, presumably with all the Infinity Gems, um, that's probably going to cause problems. I'm, I'm guessing. Just, uh, yeah. Just a little. It's so. Like problem. Yeah. Typically, it does. Just a smidge. So, so we'll have to. Uh, We'll have to wait and see, and we'll keep waiting till the trailer drops at some point. So <laughs> soon. Thank you, Russo brothers, for that nice, solid announcement. Soon. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, you know, at this point, it's late July, so it's almost August. So we only have. Three months until Thor Ragnarok, so sometime between now and Thor Ragnarok, we will get a trailer because that trailer will be playing with Thor Ragnarok. Uh, so, mm-hmm. And more than likely, also playing alongside, it'll also be a trailer you see before The Last Jedi as well. So, mm-hmm. you know, it shouldn't be too much longer. More than likely, we'll get some sort of teaser. And. But, of course, these days, teasers tend to be almost as long as an actual trailer. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I would guess probably in the next month or so, we'll probably get some sort of teaser. And then not long after that, we will get a full-on trailer. So, we shall see. They may hold off on the full 
Infinity War trailer. If I, if I know Marvel slash Disney, we will probably get a teaser sometime between now and September. And then they might, just to get people to watch, they may tie in the trailer with uh, Inhumans. That at, makes sense. At the end of September, because that airs at the end of September. That'll be on TV at the end of September. So yeah, I could see Marvel holding off on an Infin- the Infinity War trailer for Inhumans to try to get people to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially since a lot of people have, I, I, well, the ones I've seen have been like, yeah, I'm not so sure about this whole Inhumans thing. Yeah, we'll we'll get to that too here momentarily. Yeah, but we're yes. gonna, we're just at the film here, and then we'll get to TV. Um, so we got some casting news for Ant Man and the Wasp. Um, Michelle Pfeiffer is going to play Hope Van Dyne. Cool. So. That's exciting. That's pretty yeah. cool. Oh, and then they also made some other uh, role <laughs> announcements, which, unfortunately, of the four people that they mentioned outside of Michelle Pfeiffer, I only know Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> Same here. Yeah. I don't know yeah, who the other people too. are. Sophie. <laughs> No, and I don't know who any of these characters are because I'm a comic book noob, but uh, but you can uh, look up those people, I guess, on IMDb and see what else they have uh, done, I guess. Um, and then um, we did, during the, the Marvel panel, the big Marvel panel in Hall H, um, they did show uh, preliminary um, images of Captain Marvel and uh, gave us a bit more info on her movie, um, which will be coming out in 2019. Her movie, uh, which obviously will be an origin story of some sort, um, will actually be set in the 1990s. Ooh. So, and we will get um, the kind of the big thing is uh, Captain Marvel will be set in nineteen in the nineteen nineties. We'll have Nick Fury with both eyeballs. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> and probably still as sassy. Yeah, probably. Yeah, so probably still as Nick Fury esque as, as Nick Fury is. Uh, he'll just be, oh, yes. he'll be able to see without turning, I guess, as Maria Hill. Uh, so I wonder if we're going to ever find out what happened to because like I've been curious about that That's, since. And a lot of people are speculating him. we might find out might find out how he lost that eye in this movie. So mm-hmm. um, a lot of people are uh, questioning um, how because Captain Marvel supposedly is going to make an appearance in Infinity War. Um, how she will look in Infinity War versus her standalone movie because of the time difference. Uh, just because the images we've seen, she looks pretty much the same. Um, and it's like, you know, like 1990s, 20, 30 year time difference. So there's, there's a lot of speculation on they could potentially pull from in the comics that involve things like time travel. Um, and that, yeah, and I was just going to say time travel stone. might be, yeah. Yeah. Wibbly 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 wibbly. yeah. Yeah. So, and they, they did, um, mention though, that in her movie, she will be fighting the scrolls who are a race of alien shapeshifters. Hmm. So. Sounds cool. Yeah. Which the Skulls <laughs> actually um, first appeared in the second ever issue of the Fantastic Four, but James Gunn pointed out last year that Fox owns the right to the Fantastic Four, but only some of the Skrulls, which is why they're going to be able to make an appearance in the MCU. Oh, cool. Hmm. Huh. See, I thought that they'd lost the rights to Fantastic. Oh, okay. So, that's... Uh, they, they did some wheeling and dealing with Fox, I guess, to uh, 
get the rights to certain characters. So, but, you know, at this point, Fox is like, yeah, yeah, but Skrulls, whatever, but we're keeping the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. You can't have any of them. And Deadpool. <laughs> They're right. <laughs> because they've been doing so well with Fantastic Four lately. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right? You can't, you can't see my sarcastic face, but yeah. it's here. <laughs> yeah, so... We'll we'll see how they manage to wibbly wobbly timey wimey fit Captain Marvel into um, if she does make that appearance in Infinity War because that's never been confirmed. It's just a long standing rumor, um, and as far as I know, Brie Larson has not been spotted on the Infinity War set. But that doesn't mean that she could have snuck in, filmed something, and then snuck back out. Um, yeah, so, well, exactly. which has been known to happen. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. that, We'll have to wait and see and find out. So, um, but in uh, the last bit of Marvel film, um, that's we don't have to wait too long for. Thank goodness, uh, we did get a new trailer for Thor Ragnarok. And oh my god! Oh my god! I've seen it so many times. Oh my yes. Ah. <laughs> I just I laugh the entire time. <laughs> even like mm-hmm. even with the serious bits where you've got Hella, you know, uh, you know, it's like I'm gonna destroy Asgard and build it back in build it back up in my own image and it's, you know, she's like, I am the goddess of death and I'm all like you know <laughs> the Hulk he talks <laughs> uh-huh. And I'm just thinking about Hella I'm just like you haven't met Hulk yet. You have not heard what he's done to Loki. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah. Puny, puny, puny god. Yeah. yeah, puny uh, goddess. I could just see that yeah. happening. Uh, oh, my yep. goodness. It's just, we get Thor telling Hulk slash Bruce Banner what he's missed, you know, since he disappeared at the end of Age of Ultron, essentially. <laughs> Um, and, you know, he's catching up with how he lost the, the hammer and, you know, now I'm here and we fought in a battle and Bruce Banner's like, did I win? And Thor's all like, no. And he's like, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> I, you know, so we get, we, it's like great action scenes. We've got the Valkyrie riding in on their winged horses and there's mm-hmm. explosions and you've got... Loki and Thor with like these big old guns, you know, like shooting like something out of Men in Black or something, <laughs> and you know we uh, and there's lightning and, uh, and Thor, we get Jeff Goldblum's and, character. We get Jeff Goldblum, and I, you know, it's just you know there's spaceships and weapons and explosions, and I I cannot handle the fact that we have all this going on thor's got you know this new armor and the cool helmet and he's got these new friends that are gonna be helping and, and bruce shorter banner, hair and shorter hair bruce banner yep. is running around in jeans and a t-shirt and a blazer uh-huh uh-huh <laughs> In the middle of this epic battle, he looks like he's off to go get coffee at Starbucks and then go buy a new computer at the Mac store. <laughs> On his way to give you the lecture. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. But, yeah, it looks good. It looks so good. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. so excited, though. So. I mean, it's, it's definitely not the first two Thors. I mean, we're definitely getting into Guardian, where this is being influenced by Guardians of the Galaxy and Doctor Strange. And we know Doctor Strange is going to be making an appearance in Thor Ragnarok, so that makes complete sense the way it looks. You know, it looks the way it does. You know, as we get into the MCU being solidly in outer space um, with just nutso things going on <laughs> but, oh my goodness it looks so good it looks so good i'm so excited it is it does. november yet <laughs> <laughs> oh it looks so good so i definitely have to say watch if you have to be up early in the morning watch this it's like drinking a cup of coffee <laughs> <laughs> it's like a shot of espresso <laughs> yep 
Uh, yeah. Like last night, I, I gotta tell a quick story. Last night, I was just not feeling real good because, you know, coming to the end of pregnancy and whatever, and you just, you're sore all the time. Yeah. And I was just kind of flipping through Facebook just to find something to distract myself. The Thor trailer came up and I watched it and I was just like, okay, I feel so much better. <laughs> course after i turned it off i was like back to moaning and feeling like i was gonna die but <laughs> you know, for, for a few minutes i was like i'm fine now <laughs> <laughs> thank you for mm-hmm. yes <laughs> all right all right let's switch to the smaller screen in the land of mm. tv and we got a clip from the ducktales reboot they had a whole mm-hmm. panel uh, for it, and uh, they, they, um, the show, the reboot, is actually going to start with a TV movie, and then um, the actual TV series, you know, full series. Um, but the clip that they showed is from the pilot movie, um, where um, Uncle Scrooge goes with Huey, Dewey, and Louie, um, on a search for the lost city of Atlantis, and they're, they essentially described it as um, it turns into every horrible family road trip you've ever been on. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, the, there's, there's video of the panel, um, uh, so you can, you can watch, watch that. Um, but the the cast seems very excited to uh, be doing this and to be sharing it with the uh, the world. Um, and in the process of the the panel, um, they accidentally I'm using very big air quotes here. They accidentally yeah. <laughs> showed some concept art um, that uh, included some familiar faces that will probably be making appearance in the pilot Ooh, and or okay. movie. Looking at the list, thank happy. Yes, including uh, Gizmo Duck, which I think we already knew Gizmo Duck was actually making the yeah. appearance. Uh, Megavolt, the Beagle Boys, uh, Magicka Dispel, Nega Duck, Quacker Jack, and most exciting, Darkwing Duck. <laughs> Ooh, yay! So it's like, does this mean we're going to get a Darkwing Duck spinoff? Who knows? This could knows. be the back door. It <laughs> could be. This could be. It could. I'd be all right with that. It could be. Yeah. Darkwing Duck is my friend. Anybody opposed for me taking the next bit of news? <laughs> nope. Go right on ahead. Go for it. <laughs> okay. All right, this is dealing with, uh, going on, going to be 13 years now, the two brothers in the hunting family business, <laughs> Supernatural to potentially get a spinoff, and this has been met with much cheering. As Supernatural enters its 13th season, um, we're kind of unsure how long it continues. Um, the show is planning an episode about the Wayward Sisters, which are a group of orphaned young women led by Sheriff Jody Mills. Kim Rhodes, who appeared in a season four episode of Supernatural, will emerge as a force against the Supernatural producers hope that it could become a full-fledged spinoff in the universe. Joining Sheriff Mills will be Sheriff Donna Haslam, Brianna Buckmaster, Claire Novak, um, played by Catherine Newton, Alex Jones by Catherine Redeem, and newcomer Patience Turner. Um, Patience's character is a high schooler who discovers she's a powerful psychic. Um, Alex was um, an orphan that Jody took in, and Claire Novak is actually um, the daughter of the, let's just put it this way, Castiel took over the body of her dad. So, <laughs> little into the supernatural mythos there. Um, otherwise, the supernatural panel was surprising, lacking information or news. Fans were hoping to see a teaser for the upcoming animated Scooby-Doo crossover, but to no avail. However, there was a sizzle reel for the keys events from season 12, and why I'm thinking there probably wasn't any teaser for the output episodes for season 13 is i think they had just started filming last week <laughs> yeah it doesn't sound like they would have had time to put anything together 
Exactly. So hence the sizzle reel of key events from season 12. Um, and then um, Deadline had a little more about the Wayward Sisters and a possible appearance of a character in Supernatural Season 13. Um, Loretta Devine, who played Kansas psychic Missouri Mosley in a member of appearance as the Winchester family friend in the season one episode home will return to supernatural from an episode in season 13 and possibly wayward sisters because I did a little more reading patience Turner is related to Missouri Mosley her and she is supposedly the estranged granddaughter of Missouri Mosley now moving back to the panel, the panel's truest highlight was without a doubt the surprise live performance <laughs> of the unofficial theme song Carry On My Wayward Son by none other than Kansas. Please find this on YouTube and check it out. It it's is amazing. Awesome. It's amazing. I was getting chills sitting watching it. I was close to tearing up. It was so cool. <laughs> Kansas and playing at Comic Con, guys. Mm-hmm. In Kansas, yeah. Kansas, <laughs> yes. And I watched a bit of the Supernatural panel because Kansas had offered the boys to come out on stage with them when Wayward Son was going on. They were just like, "No, we'll watch in the back of Hall H." And whatever corner they were in, one of the girls that was dancing and around in the audience kind of turned around. It's like, "Hey, can you take my?" And I can't remember if she was going to hand it off to Jared or Jensen. And she just like, ah. <laughs> I'm like, I can imagine being whole like, turning around like this, thinking about, I'm going to ask some random stranger to take my picture. Right. Oh my God. It's, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You're, 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 you're who I'm here to see. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> because there is a full version of this um, intro with Kansas, do a search for it on YouTube, Kansas, San Diego Comic-Con 2017. But the opening shows Jared and Jensen in baby poking fun at themselves as Sam and Dean. And then Kansas comes back. And then there's another shot at the end with them in baby and them kind of the Impala kind of arriving on screen, but not actually on the stage, but you know, Right, San Diego. <laughs> so it, it's it's worth you watching. <laughs> yes. Even for someone like, like me who I don't watch Supernatural, so some of that's lost on me. I'm still like, mm-hmm. Kansas was playing in all age in San Diego comic <laughs> Yes. Club. Like, yes. Oh my gosh. Just really? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm really hoping that this whole little opening makes the special features on the season 13 DVD set. I know we'll be pushing it for the September season 12 because hey, it's season 12 coming out on September 5th. Yeah, so oh, please, Power Seppi. Just, I'm asking for this clip. Special features. I mean, so someone would have had to be filming it, you know, professionally. Yes. With the sound and, and, mm-hmm. and stuff and mm-hmm. everything. Like, yeah. Come on. It has to exist somewhere, guys. Yes. I mean, Kansas, for crying out loud. Mm-hmm. A classic rock band group. Yeah. You know, legendary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the entire audience is like singing along. I know. <laughs> <The entire Yeah. laughs> yeah. Like I don't even watch. I don't on the radio. I'm like, yeah, supernatural. Oh yes. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> when the news broke that you know Kansas had performed, it, and it's like, okay, <sighs> frantic search, looking like, yay, okay, it's true. Not a rumor. Yeah. It was bound to happen like, eventually after happened. 13 seasons. Yes. <laughs> so, why not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Looks Kansas like wasn't they, doing anything. Yeah. Looks like they were having a good time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'm sure they appreciate the residuals. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm sure. <laughs> And it's like, okay, you know, how, how many, how long has that song been out and how long have, has Kansas been around? Yeah. And, Probably you know, early, early, late 60s, early 70s. 
Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is you know seventies classic rock. Yeah, like mm-hmm. you know, my my dad listened to and I listened to when I drive around with him. Mm-hmm. But it's just like they can still just rock out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They still got it, and it's awesome. Yeah. Yes. Came out in nineteen seventy six. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sorry, this. No, uh, no, that's true. I mean, I don't. I don't. That's what the Google is for? I don't know the dates. I just know it's. It's one of the it's it's one of those bands that like mm-hmm. I love because my dad loves because he you know I listened to it when I was growing up because he listened to it on the radio and mm-hmm. he has every tape CD and mm-hmm. of it ever and made something and something tells me Tiny's gonna get initiated into that as well <laughs> oh yes <laughs> yes we, we've already listen up kid. well just by just by virtue of the stuff we listen to anyway you know between Queen Kansas Boston. Yeah, mm-hmm. Aerosmith, Rolling Stones, all that good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yep. and some things that I'm not remembering currently right now because <laughs> of low pregnancy brain. Yeah. I know I keep blaming that, but <laughs> it's very real, guys. That's okay. We'll help. I'm like, okay, listen up, kid. Let me tell you about yeah. John Paul George and Ringo. <laughs> <laughs> listen to exactly. Your, listen to your mom and dad, and then listen to your aunties. Yes, <laughs> you're you're. you're your anti fan girls, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, so moving on to another earworm. <laughs> yes, I, I cracked up. <laughs> I cracked up. I started watching this and started playing. It's, like it's, like yeah, they're so going the there. Dragon's lair. Yeah. I'm just like, I remember watching the Saturday morning cartoon of that. Yeah. And then- uh, attempting once to play the arcade game and failing miserably. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we got a trailer for Stranger Things 2, and it is very 80s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> as we, oh, yes. As would we yes. expect from Stranger Things, but yes, you've got the kids in the arcade playing uh, arguably probably one of the most unique video games, arcade games mm-hmm. of the era. Um, uh-huh. not only because of the art and like the, the, the cut scenes and everything is essentially a cartoon. Um, but it was one of the first video games or arcade games to, uh, run on a disc. So, um, I don't know, a lot of people realize that I took history of video games in college, so, and then I TA'd for that same class a couple of semesters, so I have a whole bunch of useless video, like, gaming knowledge in my head, <laughs> so. Cool, I did not know that, that, that ran yeah. on a disc. Yeah, so, um, but, uh, yeah, so we, we get, uh, a look at, a look at the kids and where they are, this, Two takes place about a year after the first season. Um, mm-hmm. So we've got, um, you know, the the kids trying to go back to being normal, but unfortunately Will, after being in the Upside Down for so long, um, mm-hmm. is, is not the same kid he was before he went missing. Um, and unfortunately that is causing repercussions um, through with him and his family and his friends and the entire town, um, and everything. Um, and then 11 is still caught in the upside down, but she's still alive. Thank goodness. Um, and mm-hmm. hopefully we'll make her way back eventually. Um, and but, seeing the gang and their ghostbusters. Yes. Those yeah. Are so cute. Yeah. They're out running around with their ghostbuster costumes, trick or treating and, Enjoying the Halloween festivities while Michael Jackson's Thriller plays in the background of the table. <laughs> yes, and the Vincent Price voiceover. Yes, was yes. Perfect. That's just when they had the trailer coming. Like, oh, so good. Oh, you're going there. All right, I'm yeah. with you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It's on I the know. list. I, it's on the list. I need to watch it before the new season drops in October. I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. well, I, I mean, I'm get hooked. Yeah. Oh yeah, like I, I think I binge watched it in an evening. I was just gonna watch one episode, one or two episodes, because mm-hmm. Jared was at work, and I was like, oh, you know, I want to check this out. Maybe we'll watch it together. No, nah, I watched the whole thing. Yeah, because <laughs> like when episode three happened, it's like but, okay. 
I got to watch episode four. And then something happened in four. It's like, okay, nope. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, can't, I can't even tell you like what happens in, you know, episode three, episode four specifically, just because I right. watched it all in one go mm-hmm. and everything. And I thought I was going to be like really scared of it. Cause I don't do well with, with creepy horror type stuff, especially, you know, from, from the eighties, Mm-hmm. You know, when I was growing up and seeing those movies, I, I mean, E.T. still freaks me out. <laughs> I couldn't tell you why. Well, I can, but just, uh, yeah, it scared the crap out of me when I was a little kid. But I'm just like, mm-hmm. Stranger Things is so much fun. Mm-hmm. Well, and, the, you know, and it's not that bad of a, you know, horror and gore. You well, know, no, no, like, no, it's, it's just... Like, just oh. But, yeah, yeah I, I was I in the same boat with you because I was a little leery myself. I was like, I really didn't... Yeah. 80s horror yeah. flicks wasn't my thing but then this was like okay yeah all right we're good yeah because most well, of I the mean, stuff they really didn't show on screen it kind of happened off with the exception of a couple mm. you know it's like okay they're just gonna leave it to your imagination which is yeah well <laughs> they, 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 enough. The, yeah they they said that the 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 duffer brothers i guess who created stranger things and the the panel at san diego comic-con um, they they said essentially they wanted to um, move into TV, but essentially make a really long movie, and so they came up with this idea of essentially a Stephen King book directed by Steven Spielberg. <laughs> so it's like uh-huh. it's creepy and kind of gory, but because it's direct, you know, you know, it, uh-huh. it the style of something like Steven Spielberg would direct, it's not like totally in your face like horror right. so something like et where it's like it's spooky and creepy but you know you're not going to get totally grossed out or completely disturbed by what you're seeing on the screen so uh-huh. yeah but yeah so that drops on uh, netflix at the in october so yep at the 27th a few days before halloween yep. All right, let's move on to um, Star Trek. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, this is uh, a like most things, you know. I try not to pass judgment, but this whole thing just seems like one big train wreck. <laughs> Star Trek Discovery. Um, so we'll see. Um, though we did get a new trailer for the series. Um, and, uh, they did let us know during the panel that the Klingons in the show will be speaking Klingon with English subtitles. However, in the trailer, they're all speaking English, so I don't know if they'll speak both or what, uh, which I, I understand, you know, the use of subtitles in certain instances, but I... I'm not a huge fan of them just because I can't be reading the subtitles and still trying to keep track of what's going on at the same time. (laughs) Uh, But that's just me. I don't multitask very well with that sort of thing. So Mm -hmm. that'll be interesting, I guess, to to see how that does. Um, They did have um, on display at the convention uh, a lot of concept art and models and costumes, um, which give uh, some more insight into the Klingons and the Federation itself. Um, and we'll put a link to that in the, in the show notes so you can... There's this whole long written IO9 um, where they talk about the, so the Klingon um, costumes. They've got specific armor. Um and different accessories that go with it that have to do with this particular, you know, batch of Klingons or whatever, and the the characters involved, um, and the the weapons and that sort of thing. Um, The um, Federation uniforms, especially those on the the, the Starship Discovery, um, um, as we've seen in the pictures and the trailer, um, the uniforms are uniform. They're not the multicolored uniforms that we're kind of used to with some of the other series. So to denote um, departments, their badges are different colors. 
Um, and then instead of having the little pips like on the the neck of the the uniform to to to, to show rank, mm-hmm. they actually put the pips on the the communicator badge. Um, so, mm. um, but for the most part, everyone's wearing navy except for medical, where they're wearing white. Um, so we'll see how that works and trying to figure out, you know. Yeah, event, eventually, you you know, if you get regular characters, you know, uh, you, mm-hmm. you kind of ignore what color they're wearing. You just know, like, you know, oh, you know, you know, um, you know, you know, Worf, you know, that, you know, uh, Worf is you security, know, that, you know, or, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, in Discovery is supposed to be sort of a prequel to the original series. Yeah. So some of this is sort of like... It doesn't. It doesn't quite mesh with what what we know of in the original mm-hmm. series a little bit. I mean, but it's. I mean, it's not like Starfleet never changed their uniforms. I mean, well, yeah. we're yeah. we're we're in the middle. We're in the middle of watching DS Nine, and they just changed uniforms from one style to the other. Although the co- the color schemes are, you know, for for what what which officers in which. Um, whether it's you know a commanding officer or med- or science officer or, or part of engineering and security, those color schemes are still the same. But it's just kind of mm-hmm. like uh, I don't know if you guys quite know what prequel means, but okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> it's kind of like okay, let, here I'll 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 explain it this way. Like I said, we're watching DS Nine, and there's an episode in DS Nine, uh, Trials and Tribulations, and I'm sure like Star Trek fans know this one and it's like one of the best or you know mess you know most you know favorite episodes and i loved it i love watching it because it was it was so cool because they integrated it they did had a little kind of a time travel aspect where the crew of ds9 goes back in time to the 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 events of the trouble with tribbles episode of of the original series Mm -hmm. and like all the and the characters and the characters all wear the you know, the DS9 characters wear the the uniforms of the original series, which are very different. Look of the of the the DS9 footage into that episode. And it's just so seamless, and it mm-hmm. just looked so good. I'm just sitting there going, like, this was made in like you know the mid 90s, and mm-hmm. in my mind, I'm just like, how the heck did you do that? And I, I'm that like the whole technical aspect of the episode mm-hmm. just really floored mm-hmm. me, and how the how those characters interact with the ones that like there's there's a moment where <laughs> captain kirk mm-hmm. I, or like like o'brien and i can't remember who else it was odo was with them I, where they were like, in a lineup i think so yeah they were in a lineup because after the the fight in the bar mm-hmm. and, and kirk is berating everybody all the starfleet crew that were you know we were involved in the fight and he kind of and he and he and he stops and looks at Chief O'Brien, and O'Brien's like, "I'm sorry." <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, this is Captain Kirk from the '60s era TV show interacting with a character, with a character from DS9, and it's like, you guys, this is just so cool. <laughs> yeah, this looks so seamless, and with you know, like I said, Discovery's supposed to be a prequel. And it kind of doesn't feel like it. Yeah. Well, the, the, I don't know. Yeah, there, I mean, there's kind of a precedent for the monochromatic across the board uniforms yeah. because in Enterprise, they all pretty much wear the same uniform. Mm-hmm. It's just they have like a little stripe thing that's a different color depending yeah. on what department they're in. So that's not that unusual. It's just a lot of the, hey, this is 2017 and we've got 2017. CGI technology and it's it's making it look mm-hmm. way more advanced than the original yeah. series ever did. Uh, then you know the stuff that was filmed in 1966. Yeah, pretty much. So, speaking of the original series, there was an interesting uh, piece of information that came mm-hmm. out of the panel that has. Uh, a lot of people very concerned that this is going to create a very large continuity issue, although the people in charge have sworn up and down that this will not affect canon, that the continuity in canon will be fine, but um, they revealed that um, 
oh, I'm going to butcher her name. Uh, I have no idea if I pronounce her name. Uh, <laughs> uh, where, where is it? Sa Saniqua Martin-Green? Yeah, yeah Saniqua okay. Martin-Green. Her character, uh, First Officer uh, Michael Burnham, um, is the adoptive daughter of Spock's parents. So therefore, she is Spock's adopted sister. Huh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, apparently, they took in took her in after her parents were killed, and she was raised on Vulcan. Um. So. I uh, guess. I guess the question is: Does Spock know about her? That's the mm -hmm. question. Is you know, like, how did we have all of these? the TV series and movies and even Spock made appearances in the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies and no mention of a sister ever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, then I saw one of the Star Trek novel authors on Facebook kind of post, yeah, it's not that big a deal. I mean, we didn't know about Spock having a wife until time of muck and him going through bonfires, so... <laughs> It's not gonna. <laughs> yeah, no. The the that's too yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, for all we know, Spock could have been off doing something at the Vulcan Academy or Starfleet Academy when the adopted sister came along. I mean, I don't. <laughs> we'll find out. That that's the thing. Yeah. Is the, the the show producer um, Alex Kurtzman has promised that there is a really good explanation for how she disappeared out of Spock's life so completely that will keep canon intact. So. All right. Good uh, luck, folks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to... It's kind of like, okay, why do you have to mess with it like that? I mean, yeah, we, we get it. It's all kind of in the same general universe, but uh, they don't have to be directly connected to characters we already know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I don't know how that why that's so hard to get. But yeah, whatever. I, uh -huh. I think they just like they they're like I think they're really desperate to get people to watch. <laughs> it sounds it sounds like a like a like they're you know like what can we do to get people interested so that we can guarantee that this is successful and I don't know. Like, like I've said before, I'm not that emotionally invested in the Star Trek universe, so um, I'm, I'm not too uh, upset about it, but I, there's a lot of shake, head shaking and, you know, face in the palm with some of these, you know, things, but anyway, mm -hmm. that's just me. Yeah, it's, it's, uh... Yeah. We're not we're really not going to know till it's out. It's yeah. just kind of touch and go at this point. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, apparently, um, yeah. Since I guess Star Trek is getting a resurgence, um, uh, folks at uh, at MGM decided that uh, uh, this would uh, be a good time to uh, re. Uh, Reignite another franchise, I guess. Stargate is going to get a new series. Stargate Origins. Um, it's going to start filming next month. So, um, but it is the the premise is the leading character will be Catherine Langford, the young woman who witnessed her father, Professor Paul Langford, uncovered the Stargate in Giza in 1928, as seen in the film. In 1996, Catherine hired Daniel Jackson to translate the symbols on the Stargate, which marked the beginning of the larger story. So, but uh, it, it's not completely clear on whether this is a reboot of the TV series or a retcon. <laughs> Because uh, apparently in SG-1, it was established that Catherine did not go through the gate until much later in life. Um, but So, yeah. The, if you're a Stargate fan, uh, there you go. 
wait and see, I guess. Uh, it's going to be a 10 episode event series. So essentially a mini series. Essentially. So. Uh, and kind of like Star Trek Discovery. Um, it is going to be produced uh, for uh, a online home. So uh, in this case, Stargate Command. It will be a subscription service and will presumably host the previous TV series as well as other content. So, <laughs> yeah. I never watched Stargate, but I know I've some people... I've caught bits and pieces here and there, and then I've Stargate watched the majority Stargate. of the two seasons of Stargate Universe. Yeah. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, Robert Carlyle, K. Rumpelstiltskin, yeah. was in Stargate Universe, and also Lou Diamond Phillips, so... Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 on the list. I know my my mother in law likes uh, Stargate Atlantis because we got her we got her signed picture for, for of Jason Momoa at Comic Con last time we went, and that was her birthday present. Yeah. I haven't watched any of it. Wait. Oh, and she likes Richard Dean Anderson in SG One. <laughs> her Jared, who's just popped into. He's cooking dinner. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So I guess uh, I guess the, the folks in charge of the Stargate franchise had looked at what was happening with Star Trek and said, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> so, hey, I'm down for it. <laughs> so. Sure, why not? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move back into the Marvel Universe with a new trailer for Inhumans and um, it's uh, the general consensus is that now people have gone from to huh <laughs> as far as how they feel about it so uh, most of the trailer is what we saw in the first one uh it's pretty it's kind of the same clips except at the beginning um we do get to meet a couple new inhumans that are not you know necessarily part of the royal family black bolt and all that um and then we do get to see medusa's hair in action and uh, i i don't know if that still justifies that wig that they have her wearing or not <laughs> like it it looks like she's wearing a wig it just it's bad. It's bad. And I don't I don't know if just seeing it more in action will make me feel better about it or not. But it just yeah. I don't know if it's the color or if just the way it's styled or or what. But yeah. I have I have issues with this. I have issues with it. I really hope that just you know, the trailers are not giving me enough information at this point it's like i really don't want to pass judgment when i have not seen like the first episode or whatever and uh -huh. get the full context and everything so but yeah i i'm kind of you know i wasn't necessarily in that uh, you know crowd i just been kind of huh okay well that's a thing i'll see you in september uh we'll see how it goes <laughs> <laughs> at this point, um, uh, but in uh, in in trailers that did make me very excited, the Defenders. <laughs> so excited! Uh, so we got way more of you know them encountering each other in the the quips and the barbs and <laughs> Jessica Jones wants nothing to do with any of them and. <laughs> Uh, there's this one the one shot where Daredevil says something he's like I'm really glad that you know I met you guys or something and Luke Cage is like I'm not hugging you <laughs> uh, so, oh, it looks so good it looks so good I'm so excited oh, I'm so excited for the Defenders it's awesome um and then um, in that same panel, they did confirm Iron Fist is getting a season two, as much to people's chagrin um, and their complaints about Iron Fist. I had no problems with Iron Fist. I thought it was okay. It wasn't my favorite of the Defenders, you know, individual 
series, but I had no problems with it. I thought it was pretty good. Um, they did uh, mention that Misty Knight from Luke Cage will be making uh, some appearances in Iron Fist Season 2. Um, presumably, you know, as, as we get more and more seasons of these, there will be more and more characters that are crossing over from one or the other. Claire has been the kind of the the tether between all of them up to the defenders, but now we're going to, you know, start seeing characters from Luke Cage and Iron Fist and characters from Iron Fist to go to Jessica Jones and whatever. So, um, that should be interesting. Um, and they, they did show footage from the Punisher series, uh, season one, but that has not yet been released to the public. So we'll also wait and see. Kind of like Infinity War. Just going to have to kind of wait and see. So There was a Korean trailer for The Defenders for Korean Netflix with uh, Stan Lee doing the voiceover and Stan Lee riding around in New York in the limo, kind of talking about <laughs> heroes and everything. And at the very end, there's a shot of John, John Bernthal as the Punisher. Um because we, we see Daredevil and Iron Fist and Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and uh, them doing their things. And then uh, at the very end, you get the Punisher. He's like, oh, it looks like I showed up just in time. Yeah, you know, it kicks a major butt. And I'm like, oh, yeah. So that this point, that's the only Punisher we've seen is thanks to a Korean Netflix commercial. <laughs> so... Uh, so. Um, okay, uh, Once Upon a Time, <laughs> Season 7. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know what to feel about this. Same. <laughs> to be with you. I just, I'm, uh, it, we talked about this ad nauseum with, you know, the yeah, we, season yeah, and we, everything, we it's like... It's like, you know, I'm kind of excited that it's coming back, just to kind of, you know, especially now that they're bringing in some new characters, you know, we're getting a new version of Cinderella, we're getting Princess Tiana, who we haven't had yet, um, but at the same time, it's like, I was, I was ready for Once Upon a Time to go away, and it's not, and I'm just like... Okay. It's, uh, Let's do this I, I and think, see what happens. I think but. if they had, had, had framed this more as, okay, the first iteration of the show's over, this is kind of a spin-off sequel thing, maybe? Mm-hmm. I'd have been okay. I mean, I might, I, I'm going to check it out, but it's just kind of like, uh, I think you've milked that cash cow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's anything left to give. I mean, you know, if, if I watch it and decide, oh, wow, they totally breathe new life into it and it's awesome again then sure i will be happy to be wrong Mm -hmm. but yeah i don't know yeah i just got so invested in all the relationships and the stories and everything and now they're and now that's not what's going on i don't know it's like how does everyone have have a happy ending if they're all gone yeah Mm -hmm. i don't know yeah the 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 whole uh like um, like write up that I read, I think it was on IO9, where they, you know, were talking about what had been said at the panel and everything, and they were just, you know, bringing up some. The person who wrote it brought up some good points, where it's like, you know, Henry is, you know, still, you know, we're still gonna be in Storybrook, but. The Enchanted Forest is going to be a different Enchanted Forest or something, but at the same time, it's like, you know, he- grown-up Henry is going to go on this adventure with his daughter. So, you know, presumably that's how it's going to go. And, you know, his birth mother and his maternal grandparents are just, like, not going to be around you know, Regina is going to be the one that's around. Rumpel's going to be the one that's going to be around. Hook's going to be the one that's going to be around. But it's like, you know, like, the, yeah, you know. it's like everybody just sort of mysteriously went on vacation and didn't tell anyone. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. It's just, it's weird. It, it is very weird. I like a, like a call it Colin with the panel is like, my one issue with the trailer is where the heck is he getting gas for that motorcycle? <laughs> <laughs> 
in the Enchanted Forest. No one drives a car in the Enchanted Forest. Where is he getting this? <laughs> Maybe the fairies have like a magic dust that <laughs> I don't does know. stuff for motorcycles or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like really, Colin, that's your biggest issue with with the upcoming season. Where is adult Henry getting gas for his motorcycle in the Enchanted Forest? Oh, that man. Oh, you know people are going to ask. Oh, I yes. know. <laughs> he's, he's, it's Colin. He's still, yeah. he's still around and taking it in stride. And I think I think he's the reason I'm like, yes, I will still tune in. If you weren't around, I'd say, nah, yeah. screw it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I candy never hurt anyone, right? <laughs> Not in the least. Not in the least. Oh, once upon a time. Well, we'll find out when it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and then our last last two pieces of news are Doctor Who related. So there was a classic era panel. Uh, I think it was on Thursday, the Thursday of the convention. So it was early on. Yeah, it was. It was Thursday, and it was it was the first day of um yeah. Comic Con that yeah. That happened. So they they had a, a nice panel with uh, Peter Davison, Colin Baker, and Sophie Aldred. Um, and then they, uh, showed the first part of the, I don't think they've really said yet. Like it looks the clip that was posted. It looks like it's mostly telesnaps, uh, for this, I guess this reconstruction of wheel in space. Um, so, uh, but the full, uh, I guess story with the reconstruction and everything, um, is actually going to go up on BritBox in September. So um, if you've got a uh, BritBox subscription, then uh, there you go. You'll be able to watch Wheel in Space. Yeah. So. And honestly, it's because I want I want to check out these reconstructions. I don't have a BritBox subscription yet because I have so many of the Doctor Who stuff on DVD and mm -hmm. digital and things. But I think if these reconstructions are worth it, I don't know. It might be worth the, the, the money for a subscription or not. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah, like, like you said, the, the one little clip was just telesnaps with the audio. And I'm kind of like, yeah, I could probably find something similar online. Or I could just listen to the audio. Yeah. Because that's available. Yeah. So. But I'm glad they're doing it. So yay for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh oh. Um, and then the, the big one, the big one, like the thing that I'm most, the thing, all these things that came out of San Diego Comic Con, this is the thing I'm most excited about at the moment <laughs> is we got our first look at the Christmas special. Um, and we got an actual title. They had been calling it just the doctors. Um, but the mm -hmm. Christmas special will be officially titled twice upon a time. Um, I like and it. the trailer, oh my goodness, it looks so, so good. It so really good. does. It oh. does. Yeah, you know, David Bradley as the first doctor is the most brilliant thing ever. Mm -hmm. And even Steven, oh, no, I, I love that little bit right at the beginning of the trailer where it has the, the clip from um, Tenth Planet with, yeah. with William Hart and only he's doing his whole to the Cybermen, you know, love, pride, hate, fear, anger. Yeah. I can't remember all of it. And then it like seamlessly, and then it like transitions. You, you could tell that it transitions to David Bradley's oh, yeah. face. Yeah. Well, but it's like to color, so. almost seamlessly. <laughs> yeah. That was to the color. And it's, and it's like, there he is. He's the first doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. different. And yeah. it's like, and it actually, works. Actually, we have Peter Capaldi to thank for this. In the panel, um, Chris Hardwick had asked, you know, Stephen Moffat, um, you know, where the idea of having David Bradley play, you know, the first Doctor came from. And Moffat said it actually came from a question someone had asked about the 50th anniversary special. The I guess the last time that uh, it was at New York Comic Con because Doctor Who was not at San Diego last year. They were at New York Comic Con. Um and they, you know, asked about the 50th anniversary. And it's like, you know, of the doctors to bring back, 
um, who would you like to have had? And Stephen Moffat said, you know, obviously William Hartnell would be the ideal. And, you know, obviously Hartnell's mm-hmm. been passed for a long time, but Stephen Moffat's like, he just wasn't returning my calls. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently Peter Capaldi said to Stephen Moffat, well, why don't we just get David Bradley? to do it and Moffat was like that's brilliant so we actually have Peter Capaldi to really to thank for this um for for this you know story um and yeah so it's it's the 12th doctor with the first first doctor we've got Mark Gatiss I, I had no idea he was actually going to be in this <laughs> until he no, popped up in the trailer it, it, okay. is he playing a Hitler type character or what okay. He my, brother, like, my, my brother-in-law kept asking, is it the Brigadier? And I'm just like, if it's the Brigadier, that's not very good casting. I'm sorry. No, yeah. no, it's no they're, they're all right. All they're saying right now is he's playing like a character called like the captain or something. So um, I, don't, I don't think it's necessarily units. They look like they're like World War One era kind of soldiers if you ask me um but yeah like gay yeah. popped up i'm like what is he doing what's he doing in here and then we get this nice shot of the first doctor and we don't see the entire actress but they brought in uh, an actress to play polly yeah <laughs> so Paul- oh, the, the the girl who plays her she was on twitter saying how excited she was so yes it is it is polly yeah so we're getting I we're getting it's the same one that played her in um adventure in space and time or not I don't know. I gotta look that up, yeah. but I'll do that later. Yeah. So we're getting we're getting Polly, um, and Bill. Bill is coming back. I'm so excited! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yep. Although she did she did confirm that this is that 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 this is officially she's done with Doctor Who yes. after this. Yeah. So because some people are like, oh, is she gonna be around for the next one? Nope. Nope. Sadly. Yeah. Unfortunately, but you know, it's like, yeah. Yeah, you know, we we got our goodbye with her in you know the the season ten finale, but at the same time, it's like I'd like to see Bill again. So we are. Yeah. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Well, it, and it's it's it might just be like you know this is a goodbye to Capaldi and and, and his era. And so I think they ha- there has been talk that that Jenna Coleman's going to be back. For, they have actually like a, officially announced that Jenna is coming back. This. Yeah. 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 yeah, so it might just be you know here are your main your 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 two main companions, at the end of of your 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 ride your tenure yeah of as the doctor so you know and that's fitting that's totally fine yeah there's precedent for that and that's cool yeah so um, yeah I am just so psyched for this Christmas special not because I'm not because I want to say goodbye to Peter Capaldi because like I, I I think it was BBC America or somebody had a had a clip. You know, of or at a, at a video compilation of here's all the things that from, was from, from the BBC. era, and I'm just that was like, from, yeah. So if you want some feels, you know, watch the watch yeah, the I Christmas was like, special he trailer just got here, and then watch the tribute to Twelve, and I'm like, oh no, it's like I'm so excited for Christmas, yet at the same time I'm like, I don't want you to go. <laughs> I don't want him to go either. I just I feel like he just got here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. He, do one more season. Come on. Come on. Yeah. It some in the 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 Q and A in the the panel too. Like you know, someone asked Peter. You know, what's the hardest thing you? What's the hardest part uh, or the hardest thing you've ever done? You know, with the series. And Peter said, "Leaving it." And I'm like, oh, <laughs> right in the feels. <laughs> right. Oh, I'm like oh, Peter. Oh, go. Like, I feel the same <laughs> way. Like, you have so much to give. And I keep thinking, yeah, he's done He's done three seasons, and that's what most people do, but it doesn't feel like it for some reason. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. I can't explain it, but I'm going to miss him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Me too. Oh, oh. oh, but, yeah. Doctor Who, that was like the... I mean, there are some very fun and exciting things to come out of San Diego. You know, Stranger Things, you know, the Thor trailer, eventually we're going to get Infinity War. <laughs> uh, apparently they showed some amazing Black Panther footage 
uh, that can't be shown to the public quite yet. I mean, we did get the, the one trailer, but apparently the footage that they showed, like even the cast hadn't seen it and they kind of lost their minds at it. <laughs> so, uh, so there's all, you know, San wow. Diego, yeah, San Diego Comic Con, there's always exciting things that come out of it. Um, as far as announcements and teasers and this, that, and the other thing, you know, there were some things that were missing, um, but that all really comes down to, to timing. Like I said, there wasn't really anything Star Wars related other than toys. Um, you know, there was nothing for The Last Jedi or anything this year. Um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was not there. They had a good reason, though. They've already started filming season five. <laughs> like, the first day of San Diego Comic-Con, like, Ming-Na Wen is posted on Instagram, back to work, and she's with Elizabeth and, uh, and Chloe, and I'm like, yeah, okay, that's a good reason not to be at San Diego. You're working on season five. I will give you a pass <laughs> on that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but, uh, yeah, but Doctor Who, ugh, that's like... The one thing I'm like, oh, yes. I was just going to watch that and the Thor Ragnarok trailer on repeat until both of those things come out and I will be happy. At least until we get Infinity War. And then that'll be on repeat as well. <laughs> so, yeah. San Diego Comic Con, you're a beast and you're huge and you're ridiculous and you're so crowded and you're awesome and scary all at the same time and I will I will attend one of these years hopefully eventually and I will probably be like okay yeah that was a thing I'm done now <laughs> that, that's probably definitely one of those one and done I, I don't know like, hmm. I don't know if any of you guys saw the, the video Conan O'Brien did line con yeah where it was just like you know you're talking about conventions and you love the superheroes and the cosplay and the lines well here we have one that's just the line yeah it made fun of all the all how crowded things get and everything and it was like it was it was funny but also very true yeah yeah the, i i think i shared it on our facebook page there's a a spoof where it's just a generic comic-con panel <laughs> you'll have to watch it there's some language but it, it's funny because it's pretty much true every like hall age panel is pretty much the same it's like you know i'm the creator and make more money than everyone else sitting at this table it's like i'm the moderator i'm not quite famous enough to uh to be part of the group although i wish i was you can tell i'm the moderator because i'm wearing a a graphic tee with some obscure comic reference on <laughs> I have to check that out. I yeah. haven't got a chance to look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but it's, yeah, it's San Diego fun. is a many-headed beast. Yes, mm -hmm. it is, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Although I will say, I will say, Nerd HQ was very much missed. Yeah. This for some for some reason I, I can't. I, they announced it months ago that they weren't going to be able to do it. Yeah. Because of reasons, and I was like, "Yeah, I missed you guys." But yeah. although it looks, like, it looks like it looks like uh, Zachary found something else to do, because I kept seeing him pop yes. up for doing stuff with the mm -hmm. sci-fi. Uh, yeah. Instead, so uh, so he he wasn't he wasn't sitting at home having FOMO, mm -hmm. unlike the rest of no. us. No, <laughs> no, no. But it's just I like the Nerd HQ stuff. It's yeah. fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway. So that's our rundown of San Diego Comic Con. I you know, obviously, like we said at the beginning, we know we miss stuff because it's mm -hmm. just so much to cover, and some of it is just you know, frankly, stuff we're not quite that interested in. But if there was something at San Diego Comic Con that you saw, whether in person, lucky you, lucky sod, or or if you saw it online and we didn't talk about it, and you wanted to want to bring it to our attention, you can send us feedback. And, or, you know, even if you just want to talk about any of this stuff that we, that we discussed, send us feedback anyway. Uh, our email address is fiveishfangirls at gmail.com. And also visit our website. You can get all of our cool, everything we do. And our website address is the fiveishfangirls.com. That simple. You can also find us on Facebook and we have Twitter and Instagram. You can leave comments and tweet 
tweets and stuff there as well. And we consider that feedback. So we'll read those out from time to time on the podcast. And also, I just want to I just want to throw this out there um, just because I've noticed it because my my job, I write for a website and we have stuff go out on Facebook. Facebook and Facebook has been kind of sticky about, you know, if you haven't seen um, the stuff we post on Facebook, you guys, I, I don't, I don't know if you've noticed it with our, with with our podcast stuff, but um, if you, you know, you you like and interact with our posts, and you'll see them more often because I've, I've had people be like, I don't see your posts anymore, and I'm like, well, they're there, yeah. <laughs> but it's just Facebook's being silly lately. Yeah, so I just want to throw that out there. Um, but also, so anyway, but you can see the things that we, we post on our Facebook page. You can also, uh, we also are on YouTube and iTunes. Uh, that's where we post the podcast. We also post it on Stitcher Radio and Google Play. So you can get us there as well, review and rate us if you would. And then also to uh, to support the podcast, which is also on our website. And our Patreon supporters are like, some of the best people ever because you guys are like, I'm saying like a lot. I just realized that I'm sorry, um, but you're awesome. And I want to give you, you guys all hugs because that's how I roll. Um, but consider yourself virtually hugged yep. across the internet. And if you'd like to join our Patreon supporters, you can do that on our website as well. And then also on our website, we have uh, an Amazon store where you can go shopping for Amazon merchandise through that link and then we get a little bit of a referral cut for that and that also helps uh, financially support the podcast so that that's cool mm-hmm. and that's, okay. <laughs> that's that's all yep. like and subscribe and yeah re- 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 review and all those other great yep. things and we have some we have some pretty great listeners yep. i must say absolutely we may be a little biased, but <laughs> oh, I, I I know I'm biased. I'm very biased. Yep. But we think you guys I are really awesome. <laughs> yep. so. Uh, so. And for those wondering, yes, finally, now that we've gotten through Fandom Christmas, we will be talking Spider-Man Homecoming next week. So if you've been yes. waiting for us, we've all seen it now. So mm-hmm. we're we're good there. Um, so yes, our review and talking about Spider-Man and all that fun stuff will be next week. So So watch this space. Watch this space. So might have to go again and watch it. Yeah. I almost feel like I need to to see it again. Remember a bit things. Yes. Uh, (laughs) Things happen. Because that. Oh, I know. It's awful. You know, not that I'm tipping my hand one way or the other, but, uh, oh yes. So sad. Yeah. I'm going to have to go. Although I don't think I'm going to make it to go see it again. Yeah. That's okay. (laughs) That's what Wikipedia is for. Nice refresher. (laughs) Yeah. Well, all right. Well, yes. Yes. Yeah. Just, just in case, just in case I am not here next week, because yeah. that is a possibility. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll get to expand more on yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We shall see. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, with that, oh my goodness, uh, with that, a lot of news. Uh, we shall sign off for this week. This is Brittany and Bethlehem saying goodnight. This is Chrissy saying goodnight from Salt Lake City. This is Brittany from Wisconsin saying good evening. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Con people, don't schedule this again like this again. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs>
You have been listening to the Five Ish Fangirls podcast. Any and all movies, books, games, and other forms of media mentioned are owned and operated by the respective copyright holders. No copyright infringement is intended or implied. <laughs>